And so many of these realtors don't have a clue like what to do with their websites. They're not technical. They're, you know, a, a salesperson that maybe likes homes and people. I mean, I do think people should have like ChatGPT installed on their phone because then you can access it anywhere. And there's so many AI tools built into ChatGPT now. We all have different life experiences and we're all gonna make things, do things our own way and, and improve based off of that. Welcome back, everybody. This is Sunit Agrawal with another episode of the Reside Platform Podcast. Folks, I am pumped for this one today. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was at my dear friend Perry Belcher's AI Bot Con, and I uh, Perry had this dude come up and speak, and... He just blew me away with some of the stuff that you said on stage. In fact, and we'll talk about this in a moment, I implemented something I learned at that free event that you taught that changed my life. So thank you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ree Florin. How's it going, Ree? Very good. Thanks for having me, Sinead. Yes, sir. Um, so for those of you that, for those of our listeners that may not have heard about you or know, or know you at all, Let's let's get the little bio, brother. Yeah, sure. So I started uh, doing online marketing in the '90s. So I was a 13 year old in '99, making money on the internet, and that's uh, that's kind of where I started. There was a a thing that that paid you to be on your computer. It was called All Advantage, and it was like a banner ad on your screen. And you could refer other people. So you got 50 cents an hour for every hour you were on, and 10 cents an hour for other people that you referred down like five levels deep. So that's where I made my first dollar. Uh, for the internet, and I was uh, so so that was fun. It didn't last very long because the dot com crash happened in in two thousand. But it was really interesting to see and see the power of letting other people uh, make me money. And so that that was very exciting uh, for me. Uh, fast forward a few years, I got really interested in the stock market. So I'm like a fifteen, sixteen year old kid. And I make a stock market website that does really well and gets me a bunch of media attention from that. Um, you fast forward from there, graduate from school, start, you know, doing some more, uh, you know, expanding uh, out from there with, with doing some other stuff like eBay and working with, you know, like big name internet marketing people and, and helping them connect with other internet marketers. So like, say they've got a, a product that they're selling, I would introduce them to other people that had a, like an email list. And I would get a cut on the sales that those those affiliates would make. That was uh, joint yeah, venture. What's that called? What's that uh, the intermediary between the marketer and the affiliate? Yeah, it's a joint venture broker. And so I, I did that for a while. Uh, eventually, I did a like my own course coaching program on that. Uh, that sold uh, you know pretty decently. And then I started speaking on stage and going all over the world, uh, talking about joint ventures and marketing and email marketing and affiliate marketing stuff. And then, uh, you know, fast forward to today now, I'm almost 38 and, um, you know, I continue to do all this stuff uh, ever since then. So I'm, I'm still doing a lot of affiliate marketing stuff. I've added a lot of AI stuff the last several years, a lot of automation stuff the last several years. And so that's uh, kind of me in a nutshell, if you will. And how many people work for you out of curiosity? Zero. 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 Okay. Well, I want to talk about that because I have so many people that work for me. It is crazy. So it's truly a solopreneur, right? Definitely. Like, yep. There's, there's been times where I've, you know, hired people like uh, some VAs overseas to do some stuff, or um, I've like outsourced some stuff like on Fiverr and things like that. But yeah, I've never done like a full time like. Here's an office and a bunch of employees, and I don't have anyone that's currently uh, on payroll for me for anything. So, uh, yeah, it's totally a solopreneur right now. Yeah, for for those of the listeners and viewers who don't know, um, can you explain a little bit about just like the nuts and bolts of affiliate marketing? Because honestly, I think it's fascinating. After meeting some of you dudes, like. It's fascinating, and not that I'm saying it's a replacement for what any viewer or listener is doing. It's just a fascinating other thing. So please explain to me about that. I like to think of it as like, let's say that you go to a movie and you really, really like it, and you want to tell your friends to go see that movie. Well, the, the movie studio and the movie theaters, they don't give you any money for helping spread the word. 
about the the latest movie that came out that you really liked. But as an affiliate, you can work these deals in with different companies where you're actually getting paid to spread the word about things. So you can talk about different tools or books or vehicles or whatever and and get uh, a, a cut on, on the revenue from these things. So I, I think it really... Actually, that's quite fitting because uh, you have a real estate crowd that you know you guys are referring people to other homes that you don't per- possibly list yourself, that someone else lists, and you get a call on that and things like that. So it's kind of a similar uh, model, if you will, uh, for things where you're selling something that someone else has and you're getting a cut of the sales. Yeah, man, I I think it's crazy that like you can do affiliate rips on Amazon. Literally anything you send anyone to buy, you can make them. 50 cents on right like it's crazy oh. and tiktok too right now like yeah, they got their tiktok shop thing i haven't dealt with the tiktok tiktok shops yet but i have seen uh some of those it looks kind of interesting uh with that where the people are making these some fairly simple videos of like here's this thing i found and it's like a screenshot <laughs> and uh they're making money sending out those videos That's Dude, so so i have bought two things off of TikTok, they have the targeting down perfectly because they're it's people looking for like camera gear and lights and stuff. And I have every toy because I make content, and I totally bought two things. And you know, when you click on the when you click on the ad, when you click on the ad of somebody trying to sell it, if you push the button, it shows you what the affiliate rip is right there. They'll want to just sell this yourself, make a dollar forty per thing. Nice. Per- for gimbal made in China, which I have two of them now, right? <laughs> like, so um, cool, man. Like, make your new, you'll have to make your video of you opening up the package or something. And yeah, I, make your money back. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you are an affiliate marketer, when you are in the affiliate marketing space, you're really a master at like having a list. Yeah, I mean, really, as an affiliate, your job is just driving traffic, whether it's you've got an email list or you've got a popular website or you've got a social media following or you do paid ads or, you know, a combination of all those things. You're basically just driving traffic. The product creator or vendor, if you will, they spent the time and energy creating the website, creating the product, creating the marketing materials. They're dealing with customer support. You know, oftentimes they're doing all this stuff and they've got all this overhead. And they might be paying you, you know, 30, 40, 50% commissions on these items. And you're making more money as an affiliate than they are as the owner of the product. Yeah. Dude, there's a lot of stuff out there. I know a lot of listeners are probably seeing the same stuff come across your your feed because it's everywhere on TikTok and Instagram now. But it's been around forever. And it's super fascinating. However, to get into the nuts and bolts of today before I selfishly talk about it, just geeking out on marketing, which I, which I warned read off air that would be easy to do. So before we geek out on this stuff, um, you know, most of our viewers and, uh, listeners are in the real estate space. So I really asked you here today because you are in my mind, like the AI guy and like the, the guy that I go to when I have AI questions. And once upon a time, I was the AI guy in the real estate space. So I was so glad when I met you because I was all, here's a real expert. So good. Here's here's someone who's action, you know, taking more actionable stuff in that space. Um, so let's talk about re- real estate agents should be creating content for blogs, social media, because they want to create lists, right? And that's a highly engaged list. So if I was a brand new realtor, Reed, and I came to you and said, hey, what what do I do to start generating some leads and how can AI help me? What would you say? Sure. Well, I mean, some of the, like the easy thing, uh, the the low hanging fruit for a lot of people is improving any of the listings that uh, your firm maybe has. And that may be something as simple as just running the the listing information through chat GPT and just having it improve it because some of them I've seen are, are pretty bad. <laughs> and so if, if, if you can do that, that's going to save you a ton of time and, and get things going. Uh, then you could take stuff like, for instance, taking all the, like the images or the virtual tour uh, of the property 
and you could have that be some sort of video that you could share on different social media platforms. Uh, you could even run ads to those videos if you want so that those they could almost just be like little slideshow presentations where it's like a second or two on each picture. Great idea, dude. Ripping it through. And like yeah. that would, you know, not only show off that you have this new listing, but uh, it's a really easy video to create. And, you know, you can just have your computer do it for you. Um, so that that's really nice. Um, you know, you could overlay that with like an audio, either of you, like if you're comfortable like doing the audio part of like talking about the property details, you could do that yourself yeah. or you could even like upload the script from chat GPT, put it into like 11 labs, which can yeah. do a voice that sounds just like you. And uh, it basically clones your voice. And that could be like the, the voiceover track or uh, this little video clip. And then, you know, I would probably just run, um, you know, really low price, uh, low cost ads uh, in your local market for people that were like looking to buy a new home, which I believe is a targeting option on uh, Facebook, that there's uh, things for like in the market for, um, you know, like, Facebook they hate so real estate actually. Facebook hates it, but they're good it. Yeah. They made it a special ad category, yeah. and it's like same as the discrimination. However, oh. however, the the idea is because you can do interest still, like looking at the home search websites. But the idea is, this is my theory. It hasn't been tested right. I've been testing it for a long time. Is that if you pick the special ad category and do open targeting, that Facebook wants you to spend money on real estate lead generation, right? Because they have the damn button in there. So if you just pick that button, then the AI will figure it out. And who to serve the ad. Fantastic. So that you stay, I mean... I, I've been doing it. The ad cost is marginally different, both higher and, and lower. So it runs about average. I don't know. Maybe my targeting is that good then. Um, so, um, but how about like blogging and things like that? If you mean that scale or even that social content that scale, like let's say that I suck at real estate and I don't want to go look at any houses. They don't have any gas money. Right. And I got like, and I'm at home. And I want to generate some stuff using like AI tools and I want to maybe generate a lot. So um, just because this came to me before we dive into that, what if you took like, my, I know you guys get like the multiple listing service, like updates mm -hmm. and stuff like that. What if you took that and then sent it over to something like um, Zapier or Zapier and have that like create social media posts for you whenever there's a new listing uh, in your for instance, and you know, maybe it would. Yeah. I'm assuming it, that information feeds into like your website and kind of automatically populates some of that information in your website. So that's yeah. probably the easiest way because then uh, you'd have it go to your website, which you could have like an RSS feed. And so an RSS feed is just really simple syndication. And so that's how like a lot of blogs get syndicated, how a lot of news gets syndicated um, out on the web, how a lot of stuff spreads really quickly. And so you could have it whenever there's like this new listing that shows up on your site, it could automatically create a post on like your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your, you know, Pinterest, on your Instagram, all these different things of that stuff to, to take some of that off your folders without having to do anything. So that's like one way you could do it. Dude, um, that so like you could write like a great idea is if somebody has a geographic or demographic or niche type of list, because otherwise it's thousands of posts a day, if you have some kind of niche and, and you're not going to be able to get that information directly from the MLS, but you can get it to your website and to your email list, save search, run that through the AI and it could make Facebook posts, little video with like made up pictures, right? You could write some sort of blog, if you're really, like, let's say I only sell in, you know, uh, East Sacramento. Say where I really live, but I picked another place. <laughs> let's say that I only sold in East Sacramento. Um, I could pick like the areas, have the, uh, the website sent to my website, send it to my email, my email, like an RSS feed and create social media posts. Dude, big. Like, you could totally do that. I mean, you could have it be certain char characteristics where it's, you know, 
luxury homes that are, you know, certain amount of millions of dollars uh, as like the baseline, or they have a swimming pool or the, you know, beachfront or something that, uh, you know, makes you the unique uh, person in, in the market. And you're just showcasing those properties. Plus, so the ones that are going to make you the most money. <laughs> Dude, that so. is good. I will probably set that up myself. Awesome. Awesome. So that, that would be a good idea. idea. <laughs> one, that'd be one way to do it. Uh, you know, another, another way would be to create a lot of like blog posts uh, in your market because you could just dominate. Like so many, um, so many of these realtors don't have a clue like what to do with their websites. They're not technical. They're, you know, a, a salesperson that maybe likes homes and people, you yeah, know, like exactly. that, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But like, what if you create a bunch of blog posts specifically about buying real estate in your community, your area? You know, it's, it's people have these same kind of questions all over the place. Like how much home can I afford? And just all the questions that you get from people on a regular basis but you tailored it to your market. And you could use a tool like ZimWriter, for instance, that can write articles in bulk for you. And you just give it all these different uh, topics that you want all these articles about. And it may just be like really pointed questions. And then you add, like you append your location name, like you, I think you said Sacramento, California. So you could add that like into the question, like yeah. how much home can I afford in Sacramento, California, uh, for instance. And that could be your blog post. Now imagine if you had, thousands or you know hundreds or hundreds or maybe even thousands of posts like that targeting your community compared to every other realtor that's not doing anything not only could you drive traffic to those posts you could send them out to your your email list of your know, existing uh customers that, that you have you could drive you know some paid traffic to to those posts and further solidify you as the expert share them on social media you can do a lot with them and that that's going to set you at a much higher bar in your community versus everyone else. It's just a me too realtor. And they're, they're not doing anything like that. And they, they don't know how you have the time to create all that content. Well, you're just using a tool that's cranking out these articles for pennies a pop and it's putting them up on your website. And I mean, imagine you do that, but you're selling homes that are millions of dollars. Well, (laughs) You can make a lot of articles for, you know, the price of one home uh, commission. So it's it's pretty cool of what you can do. Yes. So let's talk about ZimWriter and blogs for a moment. So ZimWriter won't work on my Mac. <laughs> Is there a way to mail for that? I can help you with that. Yeah, there's... Um, so you could... There's a couple ways you could do it. You could install Parallels. That um, That's a, like a third-party tool that you can get that kind of puts basically windows on your Mac uh, okay. and you can access that, that, that way. Um, there's uh, an emulator called wine. Um, it's like windows, something emulator, I, I guess is what it stands for. And that's, that's what I use on mine. Cause it's totally free. And mm. um, yeah, I can send you directions uh, for that after the call. Yeah. I'll just shoot it over on Slack for you. Uh, but that, that's really simple uh, once you have that going. And then it just seems like it's just another uh, Mac application and so that, sure. that's how i do it but so, yeah those are kind of the two two ways to do it easily how many blogs should i put up a week well that's that's the hard thing um recently google's kind of been cracking down on spam content so you don't want to just go all of a sudden and be like oh i'm gonna put a thousand blog posts up you're gonna no. slowly, slowly drip feed these out you know it might be one, two, three posts a day, you're going to slowly start ramping it up. You know, what if you did? So here's one way that I think you could get around it. I think, and I'm not like expert on this, obviously Google has a whole team of engineers that have figured this out, but I think they look at like the byline of who's the article by, Um, you know, and and a lot of them will be like administrator or webmaster or something like that. What if, and like, a lot of people on here are probably like real estate brokers and they have a lot of agents that work for them. Yep. What if each agent was putting out an article a day, even if it was all AI done? I mean, if you had a hundred agents, well, that's a hundred articles you might be able to put out versus. I am one. looking at my blog right now to see who they are by. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, everybody, they're not by me. I'll tell you that. 
So but I think I, let's... But you could probably ramp up faster that way. Um, you know, I, I still would start small, but I think you could get it where it's like, well, what if, you know, it became like one person, what are the, like, let's say you had 10, 10 people, um, they're doing, you know, maybe one a week. So it's 10 blogs yeah. in a week, uh, yeah. the first, the first week. And then maybe, and they're all under different names, you know, like Tim and John and, you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, maybe the next week it becomes like two articles a week. So you got 20 articles. And then the next week it's three articles a week. So you got 30 articles. So you slowly ramp it up um, with it. I think that would be a safer bet versus someone that's just going to be like, oh, here's like 100 articles that we we cranked out in 30 minutes and, <laughs> and put up on there. That's, that's really? not going to look good. Everybody listening to this, that's the number two thing from this call I am going to implement in my business. Because we do about two blogs. Like I'm, I'm looking at it, and I have a great team that helps me with the content writing. And we do, I don't know, we've done, today is March 14th. We've done one, two, three, four, five, six blogs so far this month. So about every two days. Right? But other names do love it. We are doing that. Everybody listening, do that. Great idea. I, I would do it slowly. Like if you're yeah, doing a couple of posts a week, they're going to be like, well, why is it all of a sudden there's 10 of them that, that uh, came out this week? You know, maybe you do a couple of them on Monday, a couple on Tuesday, a couple on Wednesday, a couple on Thursday, a couple on Friday, and slowly ramp it up uh, and, and go from there. And I, that, to me, uh, feels like the safer option, especially if they're under different names and stuff like that. And maybe if you had it where people were different experts in different categories, because I think Google's pretty sophisticated when it comes to some of this stuff. That's yeah. like, <laughs> if you had someone that's like, here's the expert on, you know, XYZ type of real estate or, you know, area, and their articles are are all related to that and, and so on and so forth. That just creates more authority uh, from it. Great. Yes. Love it. Love it. That's great, so, dude. Two things I'm going to implement from this call, and we just are like, 20 minutes in. Okay, good. So, everybody listening, like, you can have AI write the blogs that you want. You can have AI scrape stuff, preferably your email, because it's yours. You can have AI scrape stuff and generate social media posts. Right? Tell everybody about that make automation that I copied off of you that did all the content at once can you talk about that a little bit because that's what i learned from yeah yeah, yeah i about forgot that. about that um yeah so at that event uh i think it's the one that created like a bunch of social media posts is that of the one yeah. you're talking about and yeah, you're so, one. yeah it was it was more of like a proof of concept at the time because someone had just like asked me <laughs> i think in between days like well could you do this and so i was like sure and i, I whipped something up in like a couple minutes where it was basically you gave it a topic and then it would create a post for like Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and LinkedIn and all that. And they'd all be a little bit different based off of what works best on those platforms, at least at the time, uh, what works best at those platforms. So like the Twitter one was obviously really short. Now the LinkedIn and Facebook ones were, were longer. And uh, I think there's like Pinterest and Instagram, they would have like hashtags and um, I think descriptions for like what to have for your image. So you could use a tool like, mid journey for instance to create the image for you and would give you the prompt so you could could make that image and so that that's uh that was a real simple automation like the the things to take it to the next step would be to have those things actually create um create and post the the post for you and so i've i've done that in other other automations not the one i um shared with you initially but where you can have it where it's like you just write automatically for you like i had one uh, that I was configuring today that wrote a very long like LinkedIn post for me and created like hashtags and stuff like that. And just, you know, I just gave it a topic and it kind of gave it a set of topics and it rotates through each topic every day. And I could do that every day, like say at 9 a.m. if I wanted, it could write uh, like this really detailed LinkedIn blog post for me and automatically post it. It looks like I wrote it. And so it's it's really cool with what you can do with that kind of stuff. And it's totally hands-free. Uh, no, that, that was in Make. For that one, uh, oh yes, but it it, 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 does connect, it does connect to OpenAI's like API, um, so basically ChatGPT, um, 
and it does it hands-free where I don't, I set it up once and I don't ever have to do it again. I don't have to think about it. It can just create this content for me, you know, either till LinkedIn dies or, you know, I die, I guess, and stop paying. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, it's not paying until your bill expires. That's funny. So have you been liking um, LinkedIn blogs for your offers and everything that you do? I mean, I'm just experimenting uh, with it. Like I, I really ignored LinkedIn forever. Um, I think I've got like 5,000 people or something on there, but I really took anything on there. Um, so I was like, well, let's just see what can happen. And, and so I've just been kind of playing with it to see, see what happens. Um, but I mean, you could do the same thing with like Twitter. I know, uh, when they changed over to X with, with Musk, like their API is a lot different now. So you have to pay money to use their API. I know there's some tools that, that have access to it, like if this, then that um, pays for it. Um, I think Buffer still pays for it. Publer uh, pays for it. Metric Pool pays for it. A few of them still pay for it, um, where you don't have to rack up the, the hundreds or hundreds or possibly thousands of dollars for the API usage, depending on how much you're doing. Uh, so yeah. it's really nice that they let you do it, and and <laughs> you can just subscribe for pretty low cost for those things. So a lot cheaper. Tool is incredible. I've been using it for the last week. Nice. Because I have a team of like four people on my social media, um, three or four or five. I'd have to really count. Let's just call it three. And we have six different brands with every single platform. So like we're like posting machines and creating machines. And we're using AI more now, not 100%, but the only full-on scheduling tool I've subscribed to thus far as Metrical because it can hit all six brands, everything but my personal Facebook. I see. Um, so, well, that's a that's a restriction on Facebook's part. Like they don't let anyone automatically post uh, anymore. So, I mean, there's ways so, around it. But yeah, <laughs> there's ways around posting it on on your personal. Is there like yeah, is there I mean, a way to you need create like desktop automations that can that can do it? Um, so there's things like cheat layer and task magic, and you could probably do it with, um, zero work and robo motion could probably still do it. Um, so there's different ones that, that can do it because it acts like it's coming from your computer. It acts like you are actually logging onto the site and it simulates like human actually doing stuff. It's not using an API connection at all. So it's a little tricky, a little, little bit of a dirty hack, but yeah, there are ways to to automate those things that can't be automatable. Wow. I think I like, I signed up for cheat layer for a month that I canceled because I never logged in. So I, so next time, next time. Good. So yeah, I'll take yeah, that tool. is a challenging yeah. tool. It's a fun tool, but it's a challenging tool to, to master. Yeah, no, I still have issues with that all the time. So. Yeah. Two seconds. I was like, oh, yep. Never mind. There's my connection span. So content <laughs> nerdy. Yeah. Right. Content generation and scale. We we just covered that. So uh how about bots outside of the social media stuff? What yeah. what can they do with some bots? So I mean let's say I I think on a lot of like real estate websites you either see like a, a live chat kind of agent thing now sure. that I've I've noticed. Like what if um it noticed that you're on a listings page and that information got fed into the chat bot? Um, so that they knew exactly what listing you're interested in. And then maybe you would also let the realtor know that, Hey, someone's asking these questions. You want me to answer, or do you want to, you know, hop on a call with this person? Cause maybe they're not that interested in typing stuff out and hearing from a bot, but you know, they might love to have a quick little chat with someone. If, if they knew that person's was available, like they maybe didn't want to pick up the phone and call themselves. But, you know, if, like, hey, would you like to actually talk to the listing agent? Like, I would probably click that button if I was super, you know, interested in the, you know, actual property or, you know, I'd ask some questions and the bot responded with some stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, I want to schedule a showing and talk to the, the agent more and stuff like that. I think that could be useful. Um, I was playing with an automation today where it was like, basically, it could... Um, look at my emails that are coming in and automatically write a reply and send it to the person. So almost like a bot uh, replying to my emails. So imagine that if someone like, would you like more details about this listing? Click here. It's like they're sending an email kind of thing. Hey, and then, what's that called? 
So, so I was I was doing that. Um, I was doing that in Make, uh, where I was setting that up, where basically it connected to like a Google Workspace account. Uh, so I logged into like a Google like individual or business workspace, whatever they're called, basically Gmail. Sure. And um, you could set up filters if you wanted. I I was just playing with it, so I didn't really set up any filters for it. But you could set up a filter where it was like, you know, one, two, three Main Street has an inquiry kind of thing. And, you know, it could reply with a very, you know, detailed response. Now, um, there might be some things that you'd want to, you know, put in that because it it may go off the rails a bit on it. So it should sure. be some trial and error to make sure that, that you got it the way you wanted. But I think that could be really useful for dealing with, with some stuff. And, and you, you're basically in the automation. So it's it basically it's looking for emails in Gmail. And you could have a filter set up where it's like emails on a certain topic or emails in a certain folder, or just every email. Um, and then the next thing it connects to like open AI and it says, you know, write an email response on, you know, whatever was in the body of that message uh, in a, you know, professional manner or in a friendly manner or whatever and, and things like that. And it'll write a, you know, maybe a couple hundred word response or however short or long you want uh, for it, and then could put like your name and business name, and I suppose you could have it where it like automatically does, um, you know, like a signature at the bottom, you know, with your phone number, <laughs> you know, website, all that kind of stuff, um, and then automatically have it sent out. So you, know, you may even put a delay in there where it's like wait ten minutes before sending the email, so it doesn't seem like this automatic like, well, how did they write that so quick? You know, but I know that time is money and, and a, a lead is worth the most of the faster you, you respond. So you may not want to put too much of a delay in there. Maybe five minutes is enough where it's like, Oh yeah, they just sitting. What if, you know, at the bottom, um, you could be like set from my, my iPhone or something like that. So then it's like, you know, totally looks like, you know, you're, you could totally fake, fake a lot of it with it. So I think you could have a lot of fun. Um, have you had much experience with like the AI calling so far? I have not. Um, I know there's ways to do it, but I have not played with it much because I don't really do a whole lot of the outgoing or incoming calls for things. So I, mm -hmm. I just haven't played with it much. Yeah, my buddies, they have a real estate tech company uh, called Ylopo. Some of my best friends in the world work there. Shout out to Barry Jenkins if you're listening. Um, and they've always had like, uh, they had really smart like texting, automated texting. And just recently they rolled out the automated calling based on website activity. I mean, right. And so I've been on the beta test. No, nothing crazy to speak of yet. I mean, it's about, it's cheaper than a virtual assistant making the calls so far. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's the result, right? It's, it's cheaper than a VA. <laughs> when it's cheaper than a VA, you could have a whole bunch of them doing different things. Yes, yeah. so that, that's where it gets really exciting. I mean, you're you're leveraging stuff, and the pricing for all this stuff just keeps going down. So it's and we're continuing to go down, right? Yeah, yeah. That's competing. How about um, yeah? But Sam Altman is trying to like get everybody to make billions of dollars worth of chips. What was that story? Yeah, it was like, they wanted. Oh, was it like seven trillion dollars or something? Yeah, seven ridiculous. trillion dollars. Yeah. So, like, it's a ridiculous amount of money. I can't even fathom how much it really is. And to build a bunch of chips to you know, just dominate uh, everything for the AI, it was like, well, okay. <laughs> um, what um, video editing software have you been using the AI driven? Have you been using any? So, like, one that I really like, if you're doing, um, like, let's say you're doing, like, a training video on, like, how to do something on a computer. Maybe it's to, to train an assistant or something. Like, here's how to set up a Facebook ad or something. Um, it, it'll record your screen, and it'll add, like, all the steps, like, on a sidebar. And it'll write what the steps are based off, like, what you clicked on. Like, go to business.facebook.com and it'll put that as like step one and it'll actually write that out for you and it'll like 
click the create and add button and write that part out and it like takes a screenshot and adds like an arrow and everything too and this is called yeah this is called komodo dex and it's just a chrome extension and so it's kind of like loom on steroids and so it's it's a lot of uh so you need to change my life and this map was all of it awesome for me hopefully everybody else wants a C or a K? I would a K. Komodo Dex. Dude, I've been looking for something to make Dex just like that. Right. So so it's pretty cool. So it'll create the video and it has all the instructions and then it can create this like almost like a PDF guide, like a little ebook, if you will. And I mean, I think you can deliver it as a PDF as you want, or it could just be like on a side next to the video. So someone could be following along on the video and I'll also see like, oh, that's the screenshot with the arrows and everything telling me exactly what to do. You can edit all that stuff. You can annotate everything. And it also like transcribes uh, your video and adds all the, the you know, your, um, you know, all like the closed captions for you. So you don't have to go get it transcribed or anything. It does that and puts it in for you. Um, you can edit based off of the transcript. Mm-hmm. You can also like get rid of like long pauses and like ums and ahs and stuff. It can do all that for you. So it's pretty, pretty powerful piece of tool. Yeah, <laughs> That's a fun software. Right after this call, bro. Um, how about like to edit content? Like these Opus or one of those other ones? Or- yeah, Opus is, is uh, really cool. I think we were talking about that and Driven. Um, back in April. Uh, yeah, anymore, not yet. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. But there's always going to be another another one. Um, with that, that's one where you can take like an episode like this, and it can cut it up and and make all these little social media clips that could not only promote this episode but promote your podcast and do other things for you. So uh, it's really useful. And there's a lot of different ones like that. Opus is is the one that I think we all kind of fell in love with at, at uh, right around the, that event. That was like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, it does, it does, does such a good job on a tree, you know, and <laughs> um, yeah, so I understand they're going to, that is expensive to do, to, to not process the videos and do everything, so they do have to charge something for it, but compared to like how much some of these guys spend to create all these little short form videos, stuff like that, it's so cheap uh, to use a tool like Opus. It's about $20 per video at at the cheapest. But compared to having, yeah, I mean, compared to like having a team do everything, it's so, so much cheaper uh, to use a tour. Have a VA. I have two full time editors and one freelance editor, and the average cost is about twenty dollars per video. Now the edit will be different than Opus. Only different, not better, <laughs> right? Nope. Not a better hook. It might have some more B-roll, but that's it. Is more B-roll maybe sometimes effective? I don't know. Uh, I don't know either. Both. I also use HeyGen, and like the guys have to like, yeah, the guys have to hold me back from not using HeyGen because I would just put in scripts in there all day long and say do do a lot of B-roll and call it good, right? Um, I, I don't know if you saw, but Frank Kern was doing that. We sure. looked at so many AI videos, like it was, it was dope. It was nice, dope. nice. So, any other ideas for workflows uh, around just the normal, busy work life of a, you know, independent contractor hustler? Yeah. Um, I mean, I do think people should have like ChatGPT installed on their phone because then you can access it anywhere. And there's so many AI tools built into ChatGPT now that uh, you really should pick up the the pro plan for 20 bucks a month. It's you kind of a now. Yeah. But it's, it's amazing what what's all in there. Like if, if you're only going to get one AI tool, that'd be the one to, to spend the 20 bucks on and <laughs> get the, the, the plus plan because you got access to thousands of different tools that people have built for uh, ChatGPT Plus. So that's literally thousands. Crazy. Um, so I, I would definitely start there, uh, you know, for other workflows, I mean, it really depends on what you want to do. Like if you're like to create like those video images, um, like this is the dirt me talking, but like you could download all the images from the, uh, listing, like at the webpage 
for the listing. You could put them in a folder on your computer and then have your computer just turn that into a slideshow for you. And you're not using any fancy video editing software to do it. It just can do it for you. Um, so that that's like a really easy workflow that a lot of people should be doing uh, in that market that I think would really make you stand out. Now you might want to add some other stuff like, you know, the the address has like a title for, for the thing or... Uh, sure. you know, if it's like the different bedrooms, you may want to add that kind of stuff in later, but you don't have to be like manually dragging each one of these images onto a timeline and a video editor and be like, well, how many seconds should that one be? And, <laughs> and sure, tweak it around yeah. and all the way doing it. And now like put it in uh, a little thing and have it, have it put all those in for, you know, two seconds at a time or three seconds at a time or something. So it's like pretty rapid fire where they're, they're going through and, and seeing stuff and you can tweak it later, but you know, 80% is good enough. Yeah, that is stuff. such a good idea. Just little content. People always say, what should I post? What should I post? And I give them all these ideas. Chat GPT has made it easier. By far. Or me included. And I was going to say this too. Chat GPT taught me to be a better copywriter. Awesome. Nice. Right? Because before, I always, like when you start writing copy, you're all, well, what do I start with? Right? Like, where do I go? And even though I don't even use chat GPT for copy 95% of the time anymore, but by using it so much and learning what would look good and did it, it made me, and I've taken every copywriting course on the planet, bro. Maybe not everyone, but way too many. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. I think I've done all of Perry's, all of Frank Kearns, John Benson. There's all these other guys like, John Carlton, I got the other day on a Black Friday special, didn't realize it, <laughs> right? Um, and using the AI has made me smarter in doing those kind of things. Awesome. Um, what are you most excited about where with all this stuff going in the future, Reed? Um, I mean, I, I think we're getting to the point where a lot of people are, this is still so new. But so many people haven't played with it. Like, like we're you and I are both in it, and, and we love it. We find it fascinating. But I bet a lot of people on here that are listening haven't even gone on ChatGPT, and they haven't even tried that yet. And so this could be really eye opening for them. Some I know others are going to be really scared about it. But I think it's more and more of us try these different tools, and we all have different life experiences, and we're all going to make things, do things our own way, and and improve based off of that, and. Someone out there is going to create something that's that's even better and improve things, even though they're in an industry that's maybe not tech related or not anything related to any of this stuff. But they'll they'll have this different mindset than other people because oh well, this is how I do things, uh, you know, previously in my business or in my life, and I can augment that with with AI or with an automation, and it just leapfrogs everybody else and kind of raises us all up. And so I think that's going to be really interesting as more and more people start playing with these things and trying different things out. And we all communicate with, with each other to, to just kind of a rising tide lifts all ships kind of thing. And we're just going to be doing more and more awesome stuff. And I think people are going to be, you know, maybe working less uh, because of it, because they can have a lot of these tools do things. I, I do think a lot of people are really worried about they're going to like lose their jobs and stuff like that. And they may lose like their current uh, position and have to shift into something else just because sure some things make it completely automated. Like I think a lot of the, you know, really tech white collar jobs and some of this stuff might've automated themselves out of some work uh, just because it's, it's, you know, people can, people that didn't know how to program can now program uh, with stuff. They don't know what they're doing, but imagine, you know, with, with how early it is in the AI space for those kind of things, what that will be like in a decade. Like it, it's going to be so much more sophisticated for those kind of things. So, um, those people are like programmers today may be shifting into something completely different. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be unemployed, but they're, they're, they might have shifted into doing something just different. And so I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, not to bash programmers or anything, but I, I think that's, that's good that, you know, there's going to be more innovation and, and just more things happen happening. I could see, um, you know, with some of those fears of the losing the jobs and stuff like that, I could see where there may be some sort of universal income. Just because I can see that, yeah, dude. people I are really like, well, you know, and and they're going to tax companies like OpenAI like a high 
high amount just to, to, to pay for those kind of things. And I know they're paying an arm and a leg for electricity because it, it takes a lot to power uh, all this kind of stuff. So I could see where, you know, maybe electricity will be more expensive in the future because the, that's one way of, you know, taxing uh, this kind of stuff is is by um, making electricity expensive. So, you know, which may push more people to go, you know, energy independent and they'll get solar panels or wind or yeah. different things like that in their homes, which would be a good thing. So I, I think it's a very exciting times. Dude, thoughtful. You're somewhat of a futurist with that universal universal income talk, bro. <laughs> A little, a little bit. I know, I know sometimes it doesn't go over well. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's maybe necessary at some point here. Dude, yeah. You know, do you ever think about like the kids? Like, what are my kids going to do? Hey, AI. I think about that shit all the time. And you have younger kids than me. Yeah, I've got a, a 15 year old and a 13 year old and a six month old. So I yeah. do kind of wonder, you know, what uh, I'm seeing stuff that's totally different than when I was their ages, you know, right. what is it going to be like when, when they're my age kind of thing? And it's like, Ooh, <laughs> this could get interesting. So, yeah, right. Well, dude, you know, um, if people want to catch up with you or learn more, where should they find you? I'm pretty easy to Google. Uh, you know, just type in my name. You could probably find me on your favorite social media platform and, and start following me there. And, you know, hopefully we can connect and just let me know that you saw me on here and, you know, send some goodies your way. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, I learned a lot on this episode, obviously. I take a bunch of notes. So, Reed, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, to everybody out there, you know, I know you were introduced to the show somehow. I liked it enough to listen this far. So, please introduce the show to someone who may have not heard of it who would like it as well. You know, we're not running any ads on the show yet. So, your support and sharing really helps us out. Uh, before you go... If you like this episode with Reed, you should go check out the episode with Steve Sims. That's a couple episodes back, and we'll see you next time on the Reside Platform Podcast. Thanks, everybody.